Hello, my name is Jerrianne Albers. I'm the fur bear biologist with the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about our wildlife surveys and what type of information they tell us. Now we have several types of wildlife surveys at the DNR. For instance, we have a volunteer bow hunter survey where bow hunters who are out during early deer season report to us the animals they see, such as deer, fur bears, and small game. And then we also have things like call surveys where biologists go out and listen for either birds like quails or pheasant or certain species of frogs and determine if the animal is calling and maybe how many are. And we also do things like count nests of terns during breeding season. So when we have these wildlife surveys, what does that information tell us? Well, for some of our rarer species, it may tell us if the animal is present. Uh, for our more common species, then it may tell us the information about how the population is changing. So what does that mean and how does a survey tell us that? Well, think of it like this. We have a jar of candy. This is our population at the end of one year. We don't know how much candy is in here, but we can see what level it's at. And then starting in the next year, when we're going to count the population again, we have the population from the previous year. And then we have animals that are going to be added to the population through things like immigration or moving into the state and births. And those get added to the population throughout the year. And then throughout the year, we have animals that get removed from the population through things like emigration to other states and through deaths such as roadkill, disease, predation, or for some species, regulated hunting and trapping. So now we're at the end of another year. We can see we have more candy than before, but we still don't know how much candy is in either jar. So this is what our wildlife surveys tell us. Whether our population is increasing, decreasing, or staying the same, it does not count wildlife for us. There's almost no species in Indiana where we know an exact count of how many we have. It's very difficult to do, it's very expensive, and we're often wrong after we've tried to do it. Now, some populations naturally fluctuate, such as raccoons. Raccoons have a natural cycle where they increase and then decrease. So what we're trying to look at is the larger picture of long-term is the population overall increasing, staying the same, or decreasing. And sometimes this change is intentional. For instance, if we have a species that's been increasing for a long time, the populations may start causing a problem, such as overbrowsing a plant and causing the habitat to be unhealthy. On the other hand, if a population's been decreasing for a long period of time, we may need to change our harvest regulations to be more conservative. Whereas when it was increasing, we would do things to make the season longer and take more animals out of the population. So if you ask the average biologist, how many rat snakes or how many raccoons do we have? And the answer you're most likely to get is we don't try to figure that out. What we do is track whether our populations are increasing, decreasing, or staying the same through our wildlife surveys.